Well, I'm here at Waterford Police, and a Cobb County police source told me just minutes ago that this is where they found the suspect. The security video shows a suspect picking a chair. He tried to throw it through this window here. When it didn't work, he walked down here. He picked up that chair and he slammed it through this window. Saturday's announcement did not come as a surprise for Ambassador Young. He told me that he's been hearing for about a year now that Carter could go into hospice care. Thea Brooks is Arbery's paternal aunt, and she wore an orange shirt immediately after the verdict. It had the pictures of the three defendants on it and the word guilty. We saw even more SWAT vehicles and police cars going down this road here, and they went over to my left. Kristen, we saw fans and students coming to Sanford State today. We saw them leaving these flowers here and the signs at this makeshift memorial. I'll give you an example. I'm going to hide behind this tree. You can see with the thermal imaging, the outline of my body is clear even with me crouched down behind here. Make sure your doors and windows are locked. You may have some sticker shock filling up your gas tank. Georgia's gas tax suspension will come to an end after saving Georgians money for the past 10 months. And the soccer game kicks off a busy weekend here in Atlanta with tens of thousands of people expected here. Ribri Ari, she spends her days camped out in a tent here. She did tell me that she is nervous, but she also says she is 100% confident all three defendants will be found guilty. Music from drums and a stereo fills the air as Ruth Arbery, Ahmad Arbery's aunt, and the rest of the family reflect on his life. It's been rough. It's been rough seeing the video, the things the defense saying, and it's just been overwhelming. For the family. They say they hope his death can change how people of all colors interact with one another. I'm praying that we all could just come together as one and not be divided and not be judged by the color of your skin and just, you know, love each other like God want us to do. Rabbi Rachel Bergman prayed with Wanda Cooper Jones, Ahmaud Arbery's mother, before she entered the Glynn County Courthouse Tuesday morning. There's a lot of weight riding on the verdict of this child, and I'm sure she's aware of that. And in the meantime, you know, there's this moment as part of a larger movement, and a man died, and it's her child. Other faith leaders joined Rabbi Bergman to support the family outside the courthouse. I think the thing that we're really learning here is the power of being willing to be uncomfortable with each other for the sake of making change. Ruth Arbery says she's flooded with memories of her nephew as she sits outside the courthouse. He was so sweet. He was humble. He would give you the shirt off his back. Quiet. He loves sports. He loves his family. Ruby Aubrey also says she wants Ahmad to be remembered for his smile and also his gentle personality. Coming up at six, what his mom had to say today about getting justice for her son. The hustle and bustle of life fills the air in Marietta Square, but it's the silence leaving Carrie Marie Jones's family with a sense of dread. For Carrie to have nobody out there praying for her, you know, that hurts me a lot. The FBI reports on average more than 5,000 Native American women go missing each year. Carrie is one of them. I think it was last year sometime was the last time I spoke with Carrie, and that was right after her mother was um, burned in the house. After Carrie's mom died in a fire, the 29-year-old experienced tragedy again, losing her father within the same year. Carrie's aunt, Janice McMillian, says that put her in a bad headspace. She's known to disappear for a couple of weeks, but never to be gone this long. Cobb County police say Carrie was supposed to meet a friend for dinner on February 13th here in Marietta. She didn't show, and investigators say there is no evidence of any confirmed communication from her since then. Janice says someone sent Carrie's cousin a message on social media last month claiming it was Carrie. Cobb County Police Sergeant Wayne Delk says detectives aren't convinced it's legit. Social media, anyone can sign in or create an account. Um, we. Uh, people deal with this all the time, fake accounts in their own name. I'm, I'm horrified. I'm scared. Violet Lauren with the Atlanta Indigenous Peoples Association didn't expect to hear about a missing Native American woman this close to home. I've been following um, MMIWG cases for years now, being an Indigenous person, and I was under this feeling of like, okay, we don't have that here. We don't have to worry. <laughs>
The U.S. Census Bureau reports 71 percent of Native American women live in urban areas, just like Violet and Carrie. Danger still exists, so educating is paramount to helping people keep themselves safe. Whether it's the remnants of the High Tower Trail in Cobb County or by raising awareness of her niece's disappearance, Janice hopes to increase visibility of the indigenous community. I understand the fear but somebody's got to speak up. She has a message for Carrie, who she lovingly called Blossom for her beautiful smile. Come home. Just come home. This house I'm in right now was her grandfather's home. If she needs us, we're here for her. The streets of Marietta are full of life. As Carrie's family prays, the unbearable silence will end. Dawn White, 11 Alive News. Joe and Jennifer, they certainly are. And the Ron Clark Academy is known for its academics and sports. And now the stepping team is taking the nation by storm. They tell their story of their ancestors as well as the potential for their own future through beats, music, and dance. It may look like you're in a Harry Potter movie, but at the Ron Clark Academy, the floor is these students' castle. At home, I'm always like just stepping around the house. Amid the singing and intricate stepping, Miles Welch is making his presence known one step at a time. I like expressing like attitude and, and sass and just different your personality through body movement. It takes longer to learn, but that's a challenge that comes with step that you tend to enjoy. Putting shoe to ground has special significance for Carson Britton Malger. Well, I feel like I'm kind of carrying on a legacy that my ancestors kind of created in Johannesburg. Our eighth graders have the opportunity to travel to South Africa. And the students had learn about the African gumboot dance where the workers who were working in the gold mines were slapping and making beats and rhythms on using their Wellington boots. These students are learning important life lessons as they step into their future. Discipline. It shows you that you have to keep, you know, exercise up. You can't be lazy or you're gonna be really winded by the time your routine ends. Don't be scared. So I feel like Step had kind of taught me to just be free and to try different things um, when it comes to anything. Those young people have big aspirations for their future. Miles wants to become a neurosurgeon and Carson wants to study theater.